If you're nervous about making a homemade bread recipe or even sick of buying the stuff from the store that you can't pronounce half of the ingredient list that's in it, I'm gonna show you a really easy two hour homemade recipe for some loaves of white bread. And we're gonna do it in partnership with my friends over at Bob's Red Mill. The absolute first thing that we need to do is get this yeast activated. So I've got some really warm water in between 112 and 115 degrees. And I know that may seem a little bit hot, but after doing this for so long, I found that the bowl of the stand mixer is usually kind of cold and it drops that temperature down from the water a little bit so that it's optimal and perfect for the yeast. So go ahead and pour the water into the stand bowl mixer. We're next gonna hook it up with a little bit of sugar and now sprinkle on that active yeast. Give it a whisk, just using a simple hand whisk. The yeast is gonna feed on that sugar, and after three to four minutes, you're gonna come back and see that it's sort of formed a raft, like a raft floating in water, same exact thing. It'll be about an inch or so off of the water. This is absolutely perfect, and at this time, we're gonna add in most of the ingredients. We're next gonna hit it with the two cups of whole milk the remaining tablespoon of sugar, some sea salt, softened unsalted butter, and of course I'm gonna be adding in some Bob's Red Mill all-purpose flour. This flour is just amazing for all of your baking needs. I always say this, but it's delicate enough for those beautiful cakes, it's got enough protein in there to make those rustic breads, kinda of just like we're doing here. So I'm gonna add in half of the amount of flour that I need right into that stand mixer. I'm gonna fix the hook attachment right onto it, push it down, and then on low speed, I'm gonna begin to incorporate those ingredients. And after about 30 to 45 seconds of it mixing on low speed, I'm gonna add about a half cup to a cup of flour at a time. The total amount of flour I use in here is five and a half cups. I put three in at the beginning, and I ended up with two and a half slowly putting it in there. You sort of just never know with something like this because if you have too much flour and you dump it all in at the beginning, it's not gonna come together. It's gonna be terrible. If you don't have enough, it's gonna be really wet. That's not good either. So if you slowly do it, you can see that the dough sort of pulls away from the edge and the sides of the bowl. That is perfect. And what we're trying to do here is really strengthen up the gluten in the dough so that it's fluffy, that it's light, that it's delicious. And we really need it once all the flour is in there for about five to seven minutes. But we're not done there, okay? We got a little bit more kneading to do. So go ahead and add that dough to a clean surface. We're gonna dust the top with flour and we're just gonna knead it for two to three minutes. We sort of want that soft top to the dough and the dough needs to be very smooth sort of all around. And kneading is a very simple technique of sort of pushing and pulling and incorporating everything and mixing everything, but you're using your hands. This is one of those simple techniques so that you can make any bread recipe out there. Once you learn things like this, you can expand and take this, literally this simple technique of kneading and apply it to all of your baking recipes. It's all about practice, my friends. So once it is nice and soft, I sort of form it into a little ball. I'm gonna place it right into a plastic container. I'm gonna pop the lid on it. And Comey's, this one is for you. You are gonna love this. What you wanna do now is sort of proof it. Let it rise until it's doubled in size. If you're making this in the winter time, there's not a lot of hot spots in your house. Maybe next to the radiator, the heater, but that maybe will make you a little bit nervous. Here's a foolproof, awesome trick for you. Pop it in the oven, make sure the oven is off and has not been on recently or else that plastic is gonna melt, and simply turn the light on. It will provide enough heat from that light to get that perfect sort of proofing temperature, was, which is kind of in between like 90 and 110 degrees. It is awesome. You will love this trick. Works every single time. And only after 35 to 40 minutes, I mean, that is it. I mean, normal proof on a tabletop, you're looking at about two hours to double in size. We killed it with about 35 to 40 minutes. We were able to double this in size. So what I'm going to do is just simply take the bread out of the container, put it on the surface, 
and then using a bench knife or a pastry knife, whatever you've got, just cut it in half. You want the dough recipe to be split in half because this makes two loaves, like I said earlier. Now dust part of the clean surface next to the bread. And then what you want to do is sort of stretch this out using your hands. I suppose you could use a rolling pin, but it's really not necessary. I'm using an eight inch loaf pan. So the width of me stretching it out is eight inches and the length is probably 15 or 16 inches, maybe the same as like both your hands together. That's a really good sort of rule of thumb measurement. Once it is to that perfect sort of shape, starting at one end, what we're gonna do is simply roll it up all the way. Now you're gonna notice after I roll it, there's gonna sort of be these lips sort of hanging out everywhere, especially on the ends. So what I like to do is sort of fold those in, then flip the loaf over and pinch all of those little seams and creases together so that it's sort of airtight all around this loaf of bread. Now simply flip it back over and add it to an eight inch loaf pan that's been heavily, heavily greased. And now I'm gonna show you another really easy technique. If you don't wanna stretch it all the way out to that sort of 16 inch mark, just make it into like a big square, maybe eight inches by, I don't know, eight inches. That's a square. Man, terrible with math. And then just fold it over. And then fold in the ends and then same sort of process, just pinch the little seams together so that it's airtight. Put it seam side down, just like the other loaf, right into that eight inch greased pan. Just gonna throw a towel over it, go chill out for 20 to 25 minutes max. Because what we wanna do is get it until it's risen just over the edge of the loaf pan. So come back, take that towel off, boom, perfect, definitely over that point. I'm gonna transfer these pans to a cookie sheet tray because I seem to drop everything. So if I got something sturdy to hold on to, you know I'm gonna be good, my friends. Go ahead and brush on a little bit of melted butter. It's gonna help brown it up. Going in the oven on 425 degrees, it's gonna take in between 25 and 30 minutes for this to be perfectly golden brown on top and done in the inside. If you have no clue what it looks like to be done in the middle, pop a thermometer in there, and once it hits around 200, 198, 199, you're in good shape. And I know I always say it, but you know what? I am gonna say it again. Homemade food from scratch just tastes better. And there's nothing like homemade bread. Pasta is the other thing. There's nothing like homemade pasta. And once you learn all of these techniques, like making bread and, and putting it in the oven to proof, and you start applying these to your everyday cooking, you are gonna be an insane cook. You are gonna run that neighborhood and your friends and family are gonna look up to you for all of these recipes. So now we're just gonna cool off this bread for about 30 to 45 minutes or so, or you can actually slice right into it if you want. That's between you and the bread, my friends. We're just gonna brush it up with a little bit of unsalted butter. Slice it up, looks perfect. We're not looking for those huge air pockets. This is a dense, simple loaf of white bread, just like you would buy from the store, except for we know what's exactly in this one. Such an awesome recipe. And if you're looking to kind of hone those bread skills, please check out my homemade French boule using a poolish leavening agent. And I will absolutely catch you on that video.